Welcome to High Desert Tech. We've got a real treat for you today. Hey, Odin and Freya are going to help us uh, in the unboxing today. Here's Freya. And there's Odin. All right. Hey, guess what this is? It's really exciting. This is the AMD 3950X processor. Here it is. It's super exciting. It comes in a smaller box. There's no cooler. Uh, here it is. <clears throat> Looks like that and like that. <clears throat> Not a lot to say about it. It's a 16 core, 32 thread, uh, 3.5 base and 4.7 max chip. Uh, it will do everything that you do better and faster. It is a little pricey, but I think it's worth it. Uh, you should get you one. These are really, really hard to get. I was complaining. I said this is a paper release. Uh, I don't believe it's even being released. It's being snapped up by, you know, bots or something. But this this thing, uh, I was actually able to just keep trying over and over again to try to get this. It's a super high demand chip. Really awesome. Uh, let me open it up for you. Looks like it comes in a case like this. Uh, here's the chip. Looks like that. You've seen these chips. This is the same kind of chips that go into AM4, the Th Ryzen 3000 series, uh, AM4 socket chips. Here's what it looks like. And there's the back of it. So, so I've got another thing for you today. We're, uh, we're going to cut over in just a few minutes to a install. We're going to install this into an NR600 case and uh, show you how that goes. I'll do it in real time instead of time lapse. And you can see all the different steps in, involved and how I, I do it, uh, which might be a little bit different than you do it. I've got, I'm replacing a 3900X processor. This is a 3950X. Uh, I'm also, um, and that's gonna be, like I said, in the, the, the NR600 case. So we'll see how that, that goes. I've got a, NFU12A fan on it, a, a CPU cooler. Uh, I know this says use liquid cooling, but I'm, in my opinion, you don't need it if you have a very good air cooler like this one, NFU12A. I think it'll be just fine with this chip. Uh, I did another install and it was fine. So, uh, and, the, and the temperatures are really good. It's actually supposed to use less voltage, less power than the 3900X. All right, we're going to cut over to the actual install. Hi, Desert Tech here. Hey, we're going to focus on the PC in this segment of the video and not my head. So you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to do an install in real time, not time lapse, for the 3950X into an NR600 case. And I'm going to narrate as I go. So the first thing I'm going to do here is take the uh, front... Uh, tempered glass off like this. It'll come off. Whoa, there we go. And then everything else we'll just do right in, in, in here. You can see right away there is a Noctua NF-U12A uh, air C CPU here. It's not liquid. And we're going to put that on the 3950X. I think it'll be way more than adequate. This is a really, really great cooler. As good as liquid coolers in my opinion. And a lot less moving parts. So let's get on it here. We've got the 3950X right here and I'm going to replace a 3900X. As you know, if you didn't see the first part of this segment of the video, um, this is a 16 core 32 thread. It will do everything really well and really fast. This is the best CPU, CPU you can buy in the AM4 slot. And there it goes. Okay, so don't do that. <clears throat> So first things first, I took the front of the case off and the next thing that we need to do is pop off these fans. These have some, this cooler has some really, really fancy fans on it and it is, keeps it very cool. Uh, I highly recommend NFU12A here. Okay, there you go. Uh, the other day I did clean off uh, most of the dust off of here. There's still some on there. Can't help it. So I got the two fans off like that. Uh, the next thing you want to do is take this cooler off and the way you want to do it is 
and this is the way I, I do it that I recommend. So other people might do it differently. I'm just saying what I think is the best way to do it. And that way is you alternate uh, untightening these screws. Tell you what, I'm going to get this little fan and move it all the way over here. So now after you do this, you may have to reset your BIOS settings, especially like your XMP1 or 2, whatever you that that you're using because when you change this chip out it will kind of reset everything. I know that's a pain but obviously we don't change these chips very often. So I'm just kind of loosening on both sides the CPU cooler like this and I loosen a little more on this side, loosen on this side. You can see I've got a power color 5700 XT graphics card in here. This is an X570 AOS Wi-Fi Pro motherboard. I told you it's an NR600 case. It's got some G-Skill Trident Neo 3600 CL14 memory, which I really recommend. That's a great kind of memory to install in the AMD platform. All right, make sure your screws are all the way loose here. Uh -huh. And then what you're going to try to do is nicely pry off this uh, cooler from the CPU. Uh, one, one time when I did this, it um, the CPU got ripped out and some of the pins, you know, got bent. So that's very rare for that to happen. I don't know why that happened, but anyway. So what we're going to do is just gently kind of rock it and remove. See how it just popped off really nicely there? And you can see uh, here's the all the, the heat sink and the fins. I think this has seven heat pipes. It's really nice. Uh, first thing I would do <clears throat> is wipe this off and I like to use a paper towel for, for this purpose. Some people use alcohol or pads or other things. My thing is get a clean paper towel and just get it so it's just super shiny and all clean. Because you're going to use this again, you're going to reuse it, you're going to want it, want it to be in good shape. Like that. Next thing you want to do is you've got, you see the old CPU down there and you're going to want to clean off all that gunk off of there. That's, that's the thermal paste from the last install. It's easier if you leave it in there and clean it in this configuration because if you try to clean it in your hand, it's really hard to hang on to, I find. And I always use a paper towel. I know when you buy these products like this thermal paste, we're going to use the uh, NTH2 thermal paste, a really good one. This, and there's a the dog going. This comes with um, this, this. This this comes with. <laughs> All right, hey 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 guys. Hey, this comes with uh, some alcohol swabs, so you, so you feel free to use your own method and use those. Um, I don't use them. I just wipe off with this. <clears throat> and get your old CPU very clean. If you're going to sell it or give it to somebody, that way it'll be in a nice shape. Make sure it's really clean. Like I keep flipping this and getting it cleaner and cleaner. Like that. Uh, yeah, so it looks just brand new. Just like that. Make sure there's none on the sides. It's easy for it to kind of flip over to the side a little bit. When you put the new paste on, you want to make sure you don't get it like uh, too much or too little. I know that's, that's really hard to say. It's a, a little dollop that goes on there. And I'll show you how much to put on in just a second. So what I'm doing here, I'm cleaning the old CPU. And it's held in there, so this is a great way to clean it right in there. All right, anyway, enough cleaning. Let us, let's get it out of there. So pull that rod all the way up and it will be able to be released. And here's the old CPU. Don't shock this or give it a little static electricity. 3900X, see ya. Here's the new processor, 3950X. It's right here. And I know my head's cut off in this video because we're focusing on the PC here. Here's, here's the processor. The new one, it looks just the same, except it's got some different letters on it and it hopefully will work a little faster. 
Uh, when you put it in, make sure that you get to it the right orientation because what you can see is the word Ryzen is, is in order with the top of this, the top of the socket and you can read the word Ryzen. You see where it, it is there and there's also a little triangle in the lower left hand corner. So you want to be able to just put it in like that. <clears throat> And then just flip the bar down. It's really s simple and easy. Now all you got to do at this point is just put on some more thermal paste. And I'm again, I'm, I use N2 H2, and I keep it really tight. So let me see if I can get this thing open again. I've got some N2 H1. I recommend that one too. I just got this big old tube of this. That's really nice. So you stick stick it. What I do is I put it in the very center. And I noticed, if you noticed on the, the, the previous processor, the way I did this was, if you do it right, you get it right in the middle, right about that much, it will evenly spread over the entire surface because you know there's chiplets in here and you want this to be, be sure that the entire thing is very well covered. You don't want any, any spots where it's not contacting here. You want this entire surface to go like that entire surface. Now when you put this particular cooler on, this is what I said, is that the uh, NFU12A, uh, uh, you want the longer side to be toward the memory. So don't, you don't put the shorter side toward the memory, put the longer side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this on here, and you want to set it kind of evenly. Make sure that the screws are lined up, because you don't want to mess with this a lot after you start getting it going. You want to get those screws right in the right spot the first time and not have to take it off and put it on, take it off. You don't want to mess up your, um, you know, the good job that you've done here and have to redo your paste. There you go. So tighten it a little bit on that side and try to hit right on there and then you can tighten it a little bit on this side. And then you want to tighten it a little bit on this side. I tighten it all, all the way until it stops. Um, maybe that's too tight, I don't know, you tell me, but that seemed to work fine. Keep tightening, like I said, put the long side of this cooler toward the memory chip, that'll give you more clearance on your memory side, which you're gonna need. So keep tightening on each side until it just locks up. It, it goes for a while, so you just keep on going. You don't want to just, just, just a little by little. I think this one's tight now. And don't over tighten it. Just get it where it won't move anymore. And don't just super tighten it down. So this side's moving a little more. It stopped moving. And then we're going to check on this side again. Okay, perfect. Now these fans are still plugged in. I've noticed on some of these X570 boards that um, uh, the fans don't, don't, don't come on after doing something like this. There's a glitch in the BIOS. They still haven't fixed it. Like uh, If that happens, what I do, and, and uh, this is just me doing it, you can usually uh, force it to work. Uh, if you leave it on, I know it's scary, watch your hands because things are spinning and moving in, in, in here. You can unplug and plug in the fan. Just unplug it and immediately plug it back in and it will kind of tell the system, hey, there's a fan here, and it will just start working from then on, even after you reboot it. It's just a quirky thing about the X570 board that doesn't ever seem to have been fixed. Uh, let's see here, this one, I think this one goes over here. Yeah, the air always goes, there's an arrow on, on the side of these Noctua's. This is the NFA12 by 25 PWM, it's the one that's shipped with this cooler. Uh, but you'll see that the, the air always goes toward the side of the grill. So what you want to do is blow that air out and not in, in, into the PC. This is a little tricky to get my hand in, in here. What I have to do is get in here and I'll have to pull that up like that. I think I got that one. And I, I like it exactly even with the top. I'm really, really particular about that. And then there's that one. And I've got one on the CPU connector and one, uh, there's this motherboard has a CPU and a CPU optional. Some of them have a CPU or a, CP or a pump. Some of them just have one and you have to put a splitter. This has uh, one of each, so which is really nice. So anyway, what you do is just stick your finger in there and pull that bracket over and pull this bracket over. See, and I'm putting my thumb on the top just to make sure it's even. I don't like it to be too high or too low. 
and amazingly enough that is it uh, it's really not a hard build I'm gonna wipe out some of this dust here but uh, it is really an easy build <clears throat> like I say you'll have to go into your um, settings and uh, make sure that you get your XMP or whatever your favorite BIOS settings is you're gonna have to redo it after you change your chip out because sometimes it complains and hey there's a new chip in here a new something new even a few people have said that they've got um, to um, um, anyway I don't know what I was gonna say there but um, totally redo their BIOS settings like I said other thing people have said about the NR600 case is that uh, the power supply has more room than I showed in my last video and, and we're, we're going to look into that but in a different video. Okay, that's it. It's back into the original state. You can plug it in and also when you first come up, it may not come up to the screen. Some people have said it doesn't come up to the screen the first time. It's okay. Just turn it off and turn it on again. From then on it sh should work fine. Okay, the desert is calling. And I must go and click like and subscribe.